Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys. We're gonna have our 686 three inch Smith & Wesson on display here. This is a 686 plus. So it's a seven shooter. I really, really like this revolver, which is kind of the reason that I'm doing this video. I wanted to just get it out, shoot it, show it some love. But I thought at the same time, it would be an excellent opportunity to walk through some of the point of impact, point of aim changes, whenever you switch bullet weights, velocities, things like that. So I've got four different rounds out here with me today. One of which is the 110 grain uh, FTX bullet. This has got a green tip in it. It was uh, like a factory seconds or something like that. Got it from Midway. It's essentially the critical defense bullet, but you got a green tip, a zombie max instead of the red. I've got a 148 grain uh, this is the hollow base wad cutter, powder puff loads, not going very fast. And then I have 158 grain lead round nose. These are about middle of the road loads. Now those three are three or uh, 38 special. Then I have 170 grain. This is a coated flat nose, wide met plat on it. This is a 357 Magnum and these are pretty stout loads. So we'll just see how the point of impact changes with the different loads, not adjusting the sights or anything like that. Behind me, you can see I've got paper target set up. I've got two dots on that target. I've got another target laying here with two dots on it. That way we can kind of, we don't get our bullets, our patterns crossing back and forth. I'll switch targets between the two uh, sets of loads. But I'm gonna shoot five rounds each. I'm gonna shoot off a of rest, which I hate doing but I'm gonna shoot off of a rest anyways, and we'll see how the point of impact changes when we switch our loads. And then I've got some just, some of those 158 grain lead round nose 38s here, where I'm just gonna play around and bang some steel with it, and y'all can stick around for that or not. Depends on when, if you want to or not, but these are typically what I shoot out of this gun, so I would imagine those would probably be closer to point of impact, point of aim. I could be wrong. I don't know, I tend to hit the steel well with them. But enough chatter, let's go ahead and get set up here. I'll get a camera up close on the target and we'll start out with those 110 grainers. We'll just work our way up in weight. So it'll go 110s, 148 grain wad cutters, 158 grain lead round nose, and then the heavy boy 170 grainers. All right, so I've got the 110 grainers loaded up here. I'm gonna aim for that uh, I'm gonna aim for the bottom one because I think these light ones might hit a little high. So I'm gonna aim for the bottom dot. Shooting off of a wrist, which I love. I was wrong, I hit a little low. All right. There's our five of those. Looks like the fifth shot blew the, the pasty off, so it was good timing. Looks like a little bit of vertical stringing. It's probably just me, but majority of it hit a little bit low. So let's just go ahead and try the wad cutters. All right, so I got the 148 grainers loaded in here. These are powder puffs. They're, there's not a lot of recoil to them at all, but they are an absolute blast to shoot, no pun intended. Great for women, kids, stuff like that to shoot too, because there's not a lot of muzzle blast either. But I'm gonna aim for that top dot. Let's see how these group. And I'm shooting everything single action just for grouping purposes. As you can tell, there wasn't a lot of recoil there. Now that pasty flew off on the fourth shot. You're gonna have to look at the footage to see the point of impact changing. It's cold out here, so the adhesive's not sticking well on those stickers. But those were pretty well dead on. 
uh, that fourth or that fifth shot went a little high. I was just aiming towards the middle of the group where I thought the pasty was. So might want to disregard that last shot. But those were pretty well, they was a real close to point of impact, point of aim. So let me change the target out and we'll switch to the heavier ones. Okay, target switched out. Got the 158 grain lead round nose, 38 specials in here. I'm gonna aim for the top target on this one. Uh, just because I don't know exactly where those 170s are going to be and the bottom targets going to give me more room than with the 170s. So this will be 158 grain, top target. Same thing happened with that Pacey. I apologize for that, guys. But you can tell the first four shots were definitely right in there. That fifth one, again, went a little high, probably because the Pacey went away and I just aimed at the group. But yeah, those, those are what I shoot most of the time out of this and a lot of the other 38s, just because they're good target loads. And you can see it's kind of dialed in for those. Switch over to the 170s. Hopefully our Pacey sticks around. All right, I got the 170s loaded in here. These are hot. These are, are pretty warm loads. Uh, as you can see, the 148 grains in the 150s were pretty close to impact. The lighter bullets were shooting low. Let's see where, where this 170 hits at. You'll notice a lot more recoil and, uh, and muzzle blast. Oh yeah, a lot more. Ooh, I don't really want a whole lot of those. <laughs> those are pretty stout. I will say that first shot was definitely me. I flinched like a little schoolgirl. I knew it was gonna be heavy recoil. I knew it's a little bit painful out of this gun with these wood grips. So they kind of slap your hand a little bit. But it looks like ap after I got past my, my little girl flinch, most of those shots went high. And guys, this is only at 12 yards, so you stretch it out 20, 25 yards, I think you'll see you'll see even more point of impact, point of aim shift between the bullet weights and velocities and different loadings. So now we know that I don't have any excuses for misses with this thing using these 158 grain lead round nose. We know they're pretty well dialed on or dialed in dead on at this distance. So any misses, it's all me. <laughs> and I missed two. Hey y'all, I'm thinking about doing a, uh, some sort of a giveaway coming up soon, but I don't have a clue how to go about it or what to do with it. Don't even know what you guys would want. So if you don't care in the comments or email, go to my about, I have an email there. Go check that out and let me know what you all think about doing some sort of a giveaway coming up soon. I know I haven't done one and I probably need to because you guys are awesome and my channel has grown a lot because of you all. So let me know what your ideas are, what you may want from the channel, maybe a block of jail with a bullet in it or or something like that or shirts or whatever let me know what you all think and i'll try to do that as soon as i can and a click what a terrible run that was whoo uh, getting rusty guys i'll load up another or another cylinder here good thing this is a plus gives me an extra chance i'm gonna need it the way i'm shooting today Definitely need that extra capacity. That was a little better. 
Just needed to warm up. Ah. What would we be doing if we wasn't shooting handgun 80 yards at a 12 inch gong? Oh, got the old lead smoky thumb. That's one thing that you get a lot of shooting lead bullets is you get a lot of that soot, a lot of that smoke on your cylinders. The stainless really shows it off. Hopefully you can see it well. But it's really sooty. The way that I shoot, my thumbs generally get up into that area. So I get a lot of that on my hands. Word of advice, if you do shoot like this a lot, wash your hands really, really well. Lead ingestion is a real thing. You can inhale it, you can ingest it by, you know, getting a chew of snuff or something to eat afterwards when you got it on your hands. So do yourself a favor and make sure you're washing your hands really well after handling lead bullets, shooting lead bullets. Tumblers are notorious for producing a lot of lead in the atmosphere for breathing it in. I, a couple years, well, it's been more than a couple years now. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I ran into a situation where my lead levels got high. Took a long time to get them back down, a lot of vitamin C, stuff like that. But I had to be more precautious about what I was doing with lead, bare lead, and shooting bare lead. So a little word of advice for you guys on that. Hey guys, I just want to let you know real quick that I do have an Instagram page now. I also have a Facebook page for the Gun Dungeon, and I'm now uploading content over on Rumble, since YouTube has decided to once again increase the restrictions on their firearm policies. We can no longer show 30 round magazines without being demonetized. So I'm uploading content there. I have a Patreon account now as well, where I'm uploading videos a week ahead of time, if you want to go over there and catch some early content and support the channel, that would be great. I'll have the descriptions for everything below. Also, don't forget to actually hit like and subscribe. 95% of my views come from unsubscribed viewers. It does help the channel, helps the algorithms, the whole nine yards, and that's on any platform. If you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, any of those, it helps the channel. So I hope to see you guys over on those other platforms. All right, guys, so there you go. Had a little fun with the 686 Plus got sooty got to bank some steel shoot some paper i hope you can kind of see where i was going with this video on if you're going to practice with 158 grain loads at a certain velocity you should probably carry bullet weights around the same the same as what you're shooting in target practice and velocity is close to the same and that's what your gun should be sighted in for or if it's a fixed gun sight you know what the holds are if whether it's a six o'clock hold dead on hold whatever uh just know that you can't really go from shooting a 170 grain bullet at a certain velocity practicing and then stick 110 grainers in there and get the same point of impact point of aim it is going to change back and forth one direction or the other as you saw in here at a short distance the 110 shot low the 148 158 shot pretty close to the same which was point of aim, point of aim for me in this gun and then the 170s tend to shoot high when you don't flinch like a little girl so you can see there was point of impact point of aim changes just from 12 yards so like i said make sure that you if you're using a revolver or any gun for that matter but revolvers are notorious for having large spans between bullet weights available for them but make sure that you're training with and you're carrying pretty close to the same velocity same weight bullets so that your point of impact doesn't shift enough to cause you a problem hope you enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to hit like and subscribe guys and until next time Stay tuned.